please describe the video to us and why it's an early concept and not just a finished design. Sure. So first of all, I think there's a wow factor to it, right? We're all excited. And, uh, you know, for folks at GM, if you're a vehicle engineer and you have the opportunity to work on the, the lunar vehicle, this is pretty much a dream come true. So, you know, our teams are working this real time. And part of the purpose of the video is to share that excitement with a much broader audience. So uh, while this is very much an early stage representation of what we think the, the application might look like, uh, that excitement uh, is something we want to make sure we're sharing with as many people as possible because we're certainly feeling it here. Um, to pick up on, on Kirk's comments, uh, what you see here is, you know, lots of potential applications. When you see, you know, numerous headlights in the background there, that's inferring that we're likely to see more than one vehicle perhaps, right? There's a lot of different missions that astronauts are going to have to perform. And there are going to be times where the astronauts uh, will be teleoperating or the, the vehicle will be operating autonomously. So whether it's traversing the lunar surface or conducting science missions, uh, logistics operations in support of the, of the habitat and the permanent, um, you know, the, the facilities, um, we see lots of different applications for mobility. And it what's, it's what makes the mobility part of the Artemis program uh, so important and it's such an exciting opportunity for us. Uh, just in terms of where we are in the process, until we see the details of the request for a proposal, these are really just a glimpse of how we see uh, the opportunity playing out and what that operation might look like. But as we get closer into the, uh, the RFP stage of this, we'll be able to offer a lot more details. Wow, I'm, I'm really excited. Kirk, do you have anything else to add to that? I'm, sure. I'm getting I'm getting really pumped up right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. You know, the farthest that that humans traveled from uh, from the, the lunar lander in uh, in on Apollo 15, 16 and 17, the farthest they went was five kilometers. Now, if you're a runner, you know, five kilometers is three point two miles. Um, I used to be able to run that far. So three point two miles. The moon, the diameter of the moon, the circumference, I'm sorry, if you were going to drive around the moon or fly around the moon, 6,800 miles. So can you imagine the farthest we've ever explored is 3.2 miles right around where we landed. So oh, mobility is really going to open up um, the moon for us. It's really going to open up for, for humans to explore. It's going to open up for scientists and for other commercial activities. So uh, I'm really excited, just like Jeff says, what, what, uh, wh where this goes is, is uh, really exciting. I think there's huge potential. And, and like I said, we're really happy to be teaming with the General Motors on this endeavor. That's fantastic. Alan, you lead the innovation and growth for GM. How does this effort fit in with GM's zero, zero, zero vision and larger electric vehicle initiative and the overall growth strategy? That's a great question, Leland. Um, our vision for zero crashes, zero emissions, and zero congestion is really about creating a safer and better world for all of us. It's an ambitious goal um, for us that requires a significant amount of investment and innovation. And to be clear, our scope of impact here goes well beyond the walls of GM. And in this case, it actually goes beyond the planet we live on. Through the alliance that we're establishing here, we have an amazing opportunity to leverage our insights in electric vehicles and autonomous capabilities as well along with other proven commercial technologies that we've developed for um, Earth. And, apply, and we think we can apply them for mobility platforms that are quite literally out of this world. And the pot potential for what we're producing with Lockheed will help drive science, innovation, and technology forward exponentially, we believe, for all of humankind. I mean, how could we pass up this opportunity? You watch that video, you've been on the space shuttle. It's just a, it's a once in a lifetime opportunity for us. And, and I would just reiterate, what Jeff said, there's no shortage of people within General Motors who want to work on this program. Yeah, I know when we explore together, we find out new things that we bring back to our home planet and take care of the people on the planet. Now, so Jeff, can you talk about the potential of us using advanced battery technology for lunar applications? Sure. Um, well, you know, it's one of these questions like what, why do we go to space, right? And ultimately it's to improve the human experience and sort of, you know, extend those outer boundaries, but it all comes back to, to earth, right? I mean, what, what we do uh, through this program, the opportunity that we have to leverage our, you know, tremendous battery electric uh, know-how, our technology base, our engineers, um, we anticipate that learning being applicable to 
our commercial roadmap, as well as a lot of adjacent market new growth areas that Alan referenced. Um, I would just point to the, the challenge of operating in space uh, and the, the, some of the earlier comments about these extreme thermal environments, right? Extreme temperatures, um, you know, long nights that last up to 14 days. These are the kind of engineering uh, you know, and science challenges that through this program, we have the opportunity to demonstrate uh, our tremendous capability, our commitment to electrification for vehicles and as well as in other applications. Uh, and learn through this program to take that back to our core roadmap and continue to look for, you know, applications uh, where the, the performance and the safety uh, of this program and what that offers us can be, you know, brought into numer numerous applications. So it's it's really a great opportunity to, to work with NASA and work with our customers in that area and then bring it back to the folks here on Earth. Yeah, I think you mentioned this, but the development work on these vehicles does influence and help, I guess, the company's electric vehicle work back here on Earth. It's a it's a it's a win win for all of us. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Lisa, I think the necklace you have, it looks like it came from another planet. But I think Kirk mentioned that everything has come from somewhere else. So. Now, are there technologies that you develop for Orion or other space exploration missions that can be applied to this effort too? Eliland, absolutely. Um, the amazing women and men that we have in our workforce are really gonna leverage their expertise and experience in building human and robotic spacecraft and bring some of those technologies right onto this mobility program that we're talking about. Um, on the human side, we do uh, a lot in technology development for the crew interface to systems, and we'll leverage that type of technology and capability, as well as reliability to assure the safety of the crew. On the robotic side, we have autonomy in our robotic spacecraft, as well as robotic arms and other things. And I think a great example, recent example to share is when OSIRIS-REx visited Bennu recently and took a sample, um, we'll be using technologies like the natural feature tracking that was a part of OSIRIS-REx to determine where and how to tag the asteroid safely. And then that robotic arm with the tag SAM head on the bottom will be how we'll be leveraging robotics to uh, explore the moon and to collect science as well. So yeah, we will absolutely have lots of applications for the technologies that we use in our human and robotic spacecraft. Fantastic. Now, Jeff, can you talk more about GM's investments in autonomy? And are there opportunities to explore uses of those investments in support of this effort? Yeah, absolutely. To, to pick up on Alan's comment about the zero, zero, zero strategy that GM is committed to, we're investing over $27 billion through 2025 in our electric vehicle, autonomous vehicle portfolio. Uh, and that's that corporate commitment to the future that we see and, you know, related to zero, zero, zero. We're going to leverage those capabilities um, in the, let's call it the extreme off-road environment on the moon. Um, so I would say at this point, what we have is a, a tremendous toolkit, uh, a, a commercial uh, autonomy baseline that we can work from. And we're heads down right now and in investigating how we would take those capabilities and apply them to the specific uh, missions and operations associated with the Artemis program. 27 billion, that's a significant investment in that technology. That's a, it's a really great commitment. Um, Kirk, Lockheed Martin has also extensive expertise in spacecraft autonomy. Can you explain how this will work with GM's capabilities and the rovers? Sure. Well, Lockheed Martin has 50 years experience in deep space robotic exploration. In fact, we're, we're uh, the largest private company to do those kinds of things uh, in the world. In fact, we, we outperform most countries on the planet in that experience. We have great experience in the space environments and, and, uh, and in integrating and building spacecraft. Um, from autonomy, of course, our spacecraft, these deep space probes, probes are all autonomous. So that's, uh, that's what we do. Uh, Lisa talked about Osiris Rex here that recently, uh, last year, or performed flawlessly in capturing a sample from Bennu. So that's that's in our wheelhouse. Of course, GM is uh, investing heavily in autonomy from um, an automotive perspective. So they have they have the understanding of four vehicles on or four tires on a on a terrain uh, and the off road environment. So putting those sensors, those software, all those technologies together make perfect sense. It's really a perfect marriage for autonomy on the, on a foreign body like the uh, like the moon. 
and and kind of pulling on what Alan said, safety, zero, zero crashes is really, really important. So that autonomy can help us in multiple ways. Obviously, one is safety, right? The, the, the autonomy feature of a vehicle can keep the crew members from actually doing something that wouldn't be safe for them. So uh, waiting for an ambulance on the moon is going to be a long wait. So we really need zero crashes, uh, crashes on the moon. Uh, that autonomy can help uh, leverage what a crew's accomplishing on the surface of the moon. You can imagine the first woman on the moon needing a bunch of tools um, and wanting to, to, to bring samples back. What a great place to use the autonomy of a rover following her along as she's taking these samples. Um, and so all those things really uh, uh, pile together. And when the crew's not there, you have the ability to, to actually go and, uh, and move sensors and, uh, and mm -hmm. equipment to other places while the crew's not present. So really leverages the investment that the United States and other countries are making uh, to have these rovers on the, on the lunar surface. So we're really excited about having this autonomy capability and about joining the, the, the great experience and investment of General Motors together with the uh, experience and investment of Lockheed Martin. It's a perfect synergy with all of these, you know, systems that have been developed for different reasons, but now they're coming together for exploration in a, in a really big way. That's perfect.